Hi, my name is Karen and I've been living in Melbourne for seven long years. There are many beautiful places in Melbourne. This is one of my favorite places, the Shrine of Remembrance. And I'll tell you the reasons shortly in this video. Shrine of Remembrance is the War Memorial of Victoria and it is one of the most important and meaningful landmarks of Melbourne. It is also very old. It was built in 1934 and now it is 86 years old. So the Shrine of Remembrance was built for the men and women of Victoria who served in the First World War. But now it functions as a place of remembrance for any men and women who fought in any war. Hence, this is what makes it one of the most honorable and meaningful place of Melbourne. The annual observances of the ANZAC Day and the Remembrance Day are held here and it's one of the largest war memorials in Australia. If you want to witness these observances, then the dates are 25th of April for ANZAC Day, which is a day of remembrance in Australia and New Zealand that broadly commemorates all Australians and New Zealanders who served and died in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. And the Remembrance Day, which is observed in 11th of November, is a memorial day observed in Commonwealth member states since the end of the First World War to remember the members and their armed forces who have died in the line of duty. So at the center of the sanctuary lies the Stone of Remembrance. It is a marble stone sunk below the pavement so that the visitors can bow their head and read the inscription in it which says, Greater love hath no man. So this inscription is a part of a verse from the Bible, John 15 the 13th, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And the stone is aligned with an aperture with the roof where the sunlight falls on the word love on 11 a.m. of the 11th of November, the day the World War I ended. But due to the introduction of the daylight saving, the time has been altered. Hence, a mirror has been installed to direct the sunlight into the stone at 11 a.m. And during the rest of the year, light is used to stimulate the effect. Beneath the sanctuary is the crypt containing a bronze statue of a father and a son. This statue represents the two generations who served in the two world wars. The sanctuary is surrounded by a passage along which are 42 bronze caskets containing handwritten illuminated books of remembrance with the names of every Victorian who enlisted for active services with the Australian Imperial Forces or Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force in World War I or died in camp prior to embarkation. The passages and columns that is inside of the sanctuaries of a great classical design, making it a rare monument in Australia. Some of the reasons you should visit this place is because it has a classic design, and the designs are based on the Mausoleum of the Halicarnassus, which is one of the seven wonders of the world, and passing on from Athens. The structure of a square plan roof by a step pyramid the element that crowns at the top of the ziggurat roof references the Jurassic monument of Lysikrips. It can be entered on the north and south through classical porticos, each of eight fluted Doric columns supporting a pediment containing sculpture in high relief. There's four groups of sculpture like this one which makes the corners of the shrine with each one representing peace, justice, patriotism and sacrifice. The porticos are approached by wide flights of steps which rise in stages to podium on which the shrine sits. Coming down to the forecourt there is a tall cenotaph constructed of hawk road granite. Inscribed on its surfaces are the names of the defense forces together with the theaters of war they served in. At the top of the cenotaph is a basalt sculpture of six servicemen carrying a bear with a corpse. The sculpture symbolizes the depth of the living to the dead. The eternal flame is placed nearby, representing eternal life. The flame has burned continuously with few interruptions since it was first lit. 
At the other side of the forecourt are the three flag poles. The usual arrangement comprises the Australian flag on the left, the Victorian flag in the middle and one of the flags of the three defence forces on the right. Other flags may be flown on special occasions arranged accordingly to strict protocols. Uh, you get a beautiful view of the Melbourne CBD from here. It offers one of the most unique angles of Melbourne city skyline. People come here to just sit and watch the sun fall down and fade behind those tall buildings. It is a photographer's paradise as it gives a unique view of both a classic building and modern skyscrapers in the same scene. Finding the entrance can be a bit of a challenge, so you must look for signs towards the visitor centre and follow those signs. You should reach the visitor centre on the left side of the shrine. This is where you can start your exploration of the inside of the shrine. It is located at the fringe of the Melbourne CBD on the Bovard Avenue and the St Kilda Road, located 1.3 kilometers from the iconic Flinders Street railway station. Now the station itself is Melbourne's pride as it is the first railway station of Australia. You can walk or catch a tram from the city, that is take any southbound trams from Fed Square to stop 19 Shrine of Remembrance. If you walk, you would find some beautiful fountains and gardens. So. I highly suggest you to walk to not miss all these beautiful gardens that surrounds the Shrine of Remembrance. Well, there are parking as well, uh, which would cost you a parking ticket. The entry fees are free, but there are a range of guided tours available which ranges from $15 to $35 depending on your age. You can book these tours from the official website. These tools will help you learn and discover the history, symbolism of the shrine and why it ranks in the top 10 things to do in Victoria. These tools usually start at 11 a.m. and last somewhere between 75 minutes to 2 hours. However, please note that these tools require ability to climb multiple flights of stairs. There are other remembrance services that are free to attend. The shrine is open 7 days a week from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, the last entry will be at around 4.30. Well, the shrine is closed during Christmas and Good Friday. Um, the best time to visit the shrine is from September to November as Remembrance Day falls during this month and from March to May as the ANZ Day falls during this month. To find about the history of both these days and how they commemorate, you can again visit their website. You need to have at least four hours to do a proper exploration and learning about the shrine. And lastly, if you decide to take a tour of the shrine, children below 18 are to be accompanied by an adult while children below 6 are not recommended for the tour. Your trip does not end here. When you return back after the completion of your tour, you will witness the beautiful Melbourne city at night along with the iconic Flinders Street railway station. So this trip to the Shrine of Remembrance is a trip no one should miss. So I highly suggest you to visit the Shrine of Remembrance not only as a tourist but to pay tribute to the heroes who fought during the wars in Australia.